All right, guys, welcome back to part three of this video series where we're going to get the plow assembled and actually attached to the side by side. So, thank you for watching. If you haven't seen part one where we actually put the mounts on the side by side, check out the card right up here. If you haven't seen part two where we did all the wiring, I'll put a card up for that here in just a second. You can go back and watch those. Um, now, go ahead, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because it's going to be a three-part series on getting the plow on here but once we get some snow which will hopefully happen soon after you see this video uh, i'm going to put up a video of the plow actually in use and then i will also actually have some videos on adding auxiliary lighting to the side by side for use with the plow because i suspect that the head the factory headlights on the vehicle are actually going to be a little bit low when the plow is raised up that they're going to the plow will affect the performance of the headlights so stay tuned for that because even though that's not technically a part of this series i will be adding some auxiliary lighting to work with the snow plow that way i can see what i'm doing when i'm out trying to plow snow at night so diving right into it the first thing that i'm going to have to do is get these two uncrated um, to uncrate the blade itself you are going to need a square drive they use square drive screws to secure the crate together so you are going to need something with a square drive screw bit what i mean by square drive is as you can see hopefully that is square so you're going to need something with a square drive screw bit to get those screws out i'm going to jump into getting these uncrated so we can start assembling them Okay, we've got them all uncrated. Now that they're uncrated, first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to take these receivers off of the plow so that I can attach them to the vehicle. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. In order to remove the receivers, we're going to take our, we're going to unlock our locking pins. Same way we would if we were going to detach the plow. So we'll unlock and we'll remove those two receivers. And then once they're removed, we're going to remove the hitch pins. And there they are left and right, so make sure you don't get them confused. The nice thing about this plow setup is these are removable out of season. So, clip that one in, swing it up on the inside, the rear one, oh, when it's new, is a bit of a tight fit. I'm sure once the paint wears off, that'll be a little easier to get in. Okay, now that one's on. Do the same thing over here. That pin, and then, oh, that one slid right in there, really nice. Just like that. Now, the receivers are attached to the plow frame itself. My next easiest and most logical step is we're going to need to assemble the blade to the to the plow frame. So in order to do that, uh, I think our best bet is going to be first things first. We're going to uncover the. 
take the cover off. All right. There's a lag right here that's holding it down to the pallet. Let's see if I can get that out. All right, so we're gonna bust out our handy dandy impact and a half inch socket. Zip that lag screw out of there. Save that, they're giving us some pretty nice hardware here. Now that that's free, because they don't give you, with the plow itself, you don't get assembly instructions. But the guys over at Caldwell were nice enough to email them to me since I was going to be putting my own plow together. First thing we're going to do, I think, is get the blade off of this skid and stood up in front of this skid so that we can make the two together. Because I think if I do that back by the machine, I'm not going to have much room to work. So. Watch your back, this is not a light blade. If I lean that back, oops, watch your toes, on the skid, just like this. Then, hey look, I should be able to slide the, should be able to slide the plow frame up to it. So, with that thought in mind, we're going to. Oop. Okay. Get that out for just a moment. None of this is, none of these pieces are light and or easy to maneuver. Okay. Next problem is I'm hitting the styrofoam blocks. Those are out of the way. Now, all right. Actually, before we make those together, I'm going to slide it back. There's something I want to do that I forgot. This skid up so that I can lean the plow blade forward without it falling. like that one thing that I want to do before we get too far along is make sure I get some grease here and here that way those surfaces have a good coating of grease before we put that together since that's all going to be a pivot point it's going to be pivot points are going to be wear wear surfaces so if we grease them up during assembly that's just going to help them last longer because the only good the only way you're going to be able to grease that after it's assembled is to actually pull the plow back apart so i've got some good water resistant grease this is actually high temp high pressure like water resistant wheel bearing grease so it should handle the stresses of the snow plow a little bit better than just regular old, regular old grease because you are going to put some you are going to put some pressure on these pivot points so you don't necessarily need to use a scraper you could use your fingers i just don't want to have to wipe them down before i go grabbing my tools again All right. Ugh. 
but we got a nice coating of grease on both of those surfaces. So now we could try to mate this up one more time. Back up, so I'm gonna have to move that side forward. Just like that. Slide it over just a little bit. Well, maybe not. And then. nice coating of grease in there everything moves around pretty well now we got a few things here in our hardware bag first thing is gonna be the trip bumpers which are gonna be these two rubber bumpers Okay, before we get any farther along, you're gonna need a 15 16 wrench and a tape measure. Which I we're gonna take our tape measure, we're gonna measure the height of our, our, that our trip spring bolts extend beyond the top of the nut. And that is 7 eighths of an inch on that side and 7 eighths on that side. So, excuse me, 15 16 we're going to unthread these so we can take the tension off our trip spring. That way we can trip the plow forward. And uh, once we trip the plow forward, then we can install the trip bumpers. So. Okay, you don't have to thread them all the way, but you can just flip them off to the side. Once you've done that, then uh, we can come over here. Oop. I'm actually going to lay the plow forward for a second. Everywhere. Ugh. All right. Move that over. Now I can lay the blade forward with the blade laid forward. Now I can get to the bottom and the top. And, oh, I'm hooked on the pallet. I'll just get those out so I'm not beating the crap out of them. All right. Now comes the fun part. I need in your hardware kit you're going to find this large pin this bumper this bumper this bolt those two washers and that nut now don't worry yes this is a hardened bolt but the upside to this bolt is it is not going to take all any of the force that's going to be this pin that pin is going to take the force of the plow so what we need to do now i'm going to set these nuts and that bolt up there i need to figure out there's only one way that pin will go in 
and I suspect that the bottom hole is the smaller hole which it is all right so I got grease on it we're gonna set the pin off to the side we're gonna get the plow frame in here where we can drop that pin through so easier said than done I think Now that it's sitting in there, I'm in a position where I can now drop the pin through the plow blade. And before we drop that pin in, just like we did with the other pieces, we're going to want to make sure we give it a good greasing because there is no grease fitting, at least that I've seen yet. No, I don't see a grease fitting on the inside to be able to grease that pin which would be nice but you know that's unfortunate so we're just gonna liberally coat the pin what comes off comes off it's not a big deal get it all over me in the process and then we should be able with any luck to wiggle our pin in and it won't drop all the way through because as I just found out a minute ago that bottom hole is a little smaller now Getting this lined up is probably not going to be easy. Where am I off? Let me get that angle just right. Ah, there we go. Just like that. Whew grab one of our handy blocks of wood they gave us. There it goes. Now it's all the way down. All right. Okay, now that pin's all the way down. We're gonna take our bumper. It's gonna sit in just like that. We're gonna take our bolt. I don't know if you guys can see anything now. Sorry, I dropped my bumper. Set the bumper in there. Take the bolt in the washer. They're going to drop down from the top. Now, with any luck, I'm going to flip the whole frame forward. I'm going to try and take the whole piece. Actually, I'm going to lay the blade flat on the ground before I do this. Grab my nut. Yeah. All right. And very carefully, we're going to rotate this whole piece that flat to the ground, and then this piece up to the bumper. Now we can see the bottom side of our pin. We're going to get our other bumper, if I can remember where I put it. Oh, it's right in front of me. We'll take our other bumper, put a finger on the bolt on the top, and it's going to go in just like so. And then the washer. enough threads there that I can catch it. Not really. Alright. Against my better judgment, I'm going to put the nut on and try and draw it down enough to get a few more threads through. 
and then we'll come back we'll back off and put the washer on and it is a half inch far but I want to get up I want to get it to where the threads are up in the nylon insert which will keep it from it'll keep it from coming off I'm gonna tighten it up just a little more there we go now we've gotten the beginning of the threads through the nylon block so it'll keep that nice and locked in now while we have the plow up in this position make things 10 times easier come into our parts kit and we're going to pull out the two pins with the flat round heads and the two as i refer to them cotter pins so your pins that look like that now same thing here before we drop these suckers through I want to get some grease on them because these are going to be our pivot pins for our hydraulic cylinders so make sure they've got a good coating of grease bottom then we can install our cotter pin and that's gonna take two hands to bend that sucker those are some big stiff cotter pin this side of my needle on those pliers. I'll just use my side cutters. They'll work just as well as anything else. Grab the other side, bend her around. Now she can't come back out. Do the same thing over here. Wipe that extra grease off down there. 
It'll be fine. Hopefully I don't get it anywhere else. good bend on it that'll keep it in place all right now we can put it flip it back down flat and now we can lay the plow back down before we do though we're gonna go ahead angle you up right here we need our last pin out of our hardware kit which is gonna be a straight pin with a hitch pin and we're gonna slide our this is just our drop leg so that when we take the plow off it sits flat and we can just pull right up and pitch back up to it and we're going to install that right there that way it's all set up and now I can actually move the pallet out of the way when I bring it back down Now I can lower the plow down. Come over here. We'll actually pick up on the track itself. Get it all the way back to the lock position where we can reinstall our trip springs. And now that the bumper's in there, I'm gonna have to thread these out a little farther. want to thread it out all the way now if you remember before we were at about 15 16 of an inch the idea with these and these are almost identical trip springs I think to what was on my seven and a half foot pro series I used to have years ago is that you just want to see the gaps in the spring start to come apart that tells you you have enough tension on them when they're static. So we're at about a little over a half, about nine sixteenths. Seven eighths. Puts us at fifteen sixteenths. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Yep, I'd say that's back to where it was from the factory and I can just see light in between the coils of the spring so that should be enough tension I can always adjust these in the field when I go to using it if I find that the blade is tripping too easily last thing to do last piece last part I have is blade guides Hey, way I can tell where the end of my blade is. I can honestly tell you this much. This will be the first time in my life I've ever run a plow blade guides on it. <sighs> my old western air broke off when I got it. And I never bothered putting any on. I was pretty well right, knew right where the end of that blade was. So, But they supplied them, so we're going to put them on. We're going to use them. So you're going to need an 11 16 wrench to tighten these up. Now that shouldn't go anywhere. We're going to do the same thing over here. Make sure you get one lock nut on top and one lock nut on, or excuse me, one lock washer on top and one on bottom. Now that's 
this nice and tight. I'm gonna try and manually connect this to the side by side. Might be not a br the brightest idea, we'll see here in a minute. First things first, I wanna get my plug in up out of the way. So we're just gonna tuck it up here. The hydraulic lines for the moment. I used to do this with a conventional blade every year, seven and a half foot conventional on a truck. This is easy. All right, that's in. We're gonna connect our electrical. Which means I gotta get the plug off or the cover off of here. Oh, All right. Right, connect that harness. There's only one way you can plug it in. So now that that's plugged in, I'll go inside the machine. I'll turn the key on. I'll turn the controller on. Got it in float. Now that it's in float, I should just be able to take the head gear. Push the head gear up and in. And release the handle, and my pins are locked into place. Now the plow is mounted to the side by side. Now the last piece, the last thing we need to install before we put, before we do anything, is our dipstick. We're gonna take a 7 16 wrench. We're gonna remove the plug, and we're gonna check the fluid level, make sure it's full, and then we'll install our dipstick. That way we don't have to remove a plug every time. I can see fluid down in there, which is good. We're gonna install the dipstick, thread it all the way in, and it has a little rubber gasket on the bottom. Pull it out. And give her a look-see. And I don't look see anything on the dipstick. Looks completely dry to me. So, we need to take care of that. Now I've got it all topped off with fluid. I'm not gonna put the cover back on just yet because I wanna double check the fluid level after I do a function check of the plow itself. That way, if there's any air in the system, once it bleeds out, I can refill it. So, that being said, I'm gonna start the machine before I do the function check. That way, that way it's not drawing down the battery without the alternator charging it back up, or the stator in this case. At this point, I'm just going to let the machine continue to run while I do my final fluid check. All right, and we're sitting right about the pull mark. So, we're sitting right about the pull mark on fluid. So, the last thing that I'm going to do to complete this project is put the cover back on, which the top two is kind of... Okay, guys, sorry about that. My camera battery died. While I was putting the plastic cover back here on but we got the cover on and it is ready to go I had forgotten when I put the plow on to go ahead and raise the drop leg it's up now a few things that I want to talk about that caused me to choose the snow X over say a cycle country or um, you have, or chose me to choose this particular plow um, now one when I bought the side-by-side I inquired with my Can-Am dealer about the Pro Series Can-Am plows 
because they do offer one that has hydraulic angle on it. For me, hydraulic angle is something that I wanted because it's going to save me a lot of time. Uh, as you can see on this plow, I've got an angle cylinder over on this side. I've got the same one over on the other side. Now, the, the other thing that I really wanted that Can-Am didn't offer with their Pro Series was a hydraulic lift. They require you to use the winch to raise and lower the plow. And I don't really want to do that because I didn't want to run have have all that extra run time on that winch plus it's going to wear the cable in one area and eat either that or i have to unspool the cable and put a plow strap on in the winter and i don't want to have to go through that mess i want something i can be able to hook up to i can do what i need to do with it and it's nice and heavy duty and when i get done i unhook it i don't have to change something else on the machine okay now that being said the other things that i were, was looking at one on the back side of this plow, you can see how they have these nice large ribs on this plow. This this plow has a lot of reinforcement. It is a commercial, it's a commercial series design. Um, this design is very similar to my old Western Pro series I used to have, which I really love that plow. I just happened to sell the truck that it was on, so I no longer have it. Uh, I sold it with the truck actually. So, plus I don't need a setup that big anymore for what I'm doing. Now, that being said the plow is nice and heavy i think these trip springs are identical to the ones that were on my western pro series i had some extras i wish i'd have kept them now because those bolts and those springs i think are the same um and i had spares that way if i ever broke one while i was out working i could change them out you got this nice big heavy square two or c channel i think it is no yeah it's a c channel nice big heavy c channel down here the only downside to this one, yeah, I thought it was supposed to come with skid shoes. It didn't come with skid shoes. So I'm going to have to rectify that because there is one area that I need to plow that having skid shoes would definitely make it a lot nicer. Now, this blade is a little bit heavier than a can, uh, Cycle Country or Can-Am. There, there's a downside to that. It puts more weight on the front of the machine. There's also an upside to this. Uh, having a heavier blade is going to allow you to cut through heavy snow better. Another thing that I liked is this cutting edge. This cutting edge is a five inch tall cutting edge. There's two and five eighths of wearable cutting edge here. So the, the bottom of the plow blade is two and five eighths inches up behind this cutting edge, which means I can wear that down before I have to change it out. Your Can-Am or your Cycle Country plows don't have that big of a he or heavy of a cutting edge. That's a quarter inch thick. That This is quarter inch thick plate. And then I can also, if I want to, outfit it with a back drag edge that bolts in behind it and actually angles to the rear so you can pull up, drop the blade, and it'll scrape going backwards. Now, just so you guys know, uh, one other thing that I really did like about this plow is that even if I got the Can-Am Pro Series, if you come inside the cab, it's going to be really hard to see here. But down behind my controller, I'm out of my controller, There's, you can see part of a little cutout right there. Uh, let me turn the light on in here and give you, I don't know if that's going to help much. But you can see there's a little bit of a cutout right back behind that controller mount right there. Can-Am mounts a joystick right there to allow you to control your plow up, down, left, right if you have the hydraulic turn feature. The downside of that is, if you look... I'll set you over here in the drinker's seat again. If you look, that joystick would be down here. My shifter's up here. For simple efficiency, if I need to raise, lower, control the plow, I want to be able to do that while I'm shifting gears. That way I can keep moving. I can be moving the plow. I don't have to take my hand off the shift lever or the steering wheel to reach down here and make plow adjustments, which is really nice. I like that's one of the reasons I like this controller. Now, the other optional controller for this that you can get with it is just a joystick, which the joystick would have been okay, but what I would have, I think I would have done would have been to build a mount to go around the shifter, pull, get that rubber boot down, make a mount to go around here. That way I can mount the joystick over here and I can work the joystick with my thumb while I was shifting gears. Um, but that way, you're pushing into a snowbank, you can raise the plow up as you're shifting into reverse. Then when you are getting ready to shift from reverse back into your forward gear, you could be dropping your plow. You're not having to stop and do multiple things. 
uh, just little things like that help to increase efficiency and that is part of the reason why i got this the other part of the reason i wanted the hydraulic turn on the plow is i've got heat in, in here i don't want to have to get out of here to to every time i want to re-angle the plow and if i'm trying to clear the end of a driveway i don't want to have to stop five times and re-angle the blade to get it just where i want it so that i can clean up the crumbs so those are just some of my thoughts if you guys have any questions about this plow please feel free to drop them down in the comments i'd be more than happy to try and answer them um and like i said you know from my point of view snow x there's a couple things that i'd like you to work on on this plow one of them is that controller mount give us some uh sheet metal screws or something with that to screw it to the dash we've got plastic dashes in these things maybe if you've got a kubota or a, you know a kubota rtv or something like that you've got a metal dash but that's a plastic dash and then you didn't give us any nuts for the machine screws so that really doesn't make a lot of sense um the other thing on the battery cables i know if you go back to the part uh part two of this series where i did the electrical wiring give us another foot on that <clears throat> negative battery cable you give us a six inch extension a fuse box on the positive side but your positive and negative are the same length so then we end up with a whole bunch of positive cable that you got to do something with to get it out of your way and the negative cable is stretched to the max to get it in a position where it can actually reach the battery terminal so having another six inches to a foot on the positive cable or excuse me on the negative cable over the positive cable would be a great benefit other than that I don't see anything that uh, I don't like about this plow yet, but we haven't tried it. We haven't actually used it in snow. Another benefit that this does have is it doesn't use the winch. I have this hydraulic cylinder here to raise and lower the plow. So, whoop, that wasn't supposed to happen. I guess I didn't get it in all the way. Good thing that happened now. Fixed. I've got this hydraulic cylinder to raise and lower the plow, so I'm not using the winch. <clears throat> And the upside is, with it being a hydraulic cylinder that's raising and lowering the plow, and there's no chain, um, when I'm going, if I if I need to road, if I need to run down the road, this plow blade is not going to bounce up and down on that chain every time I hit a bump, which is really nice. I I like that. Um, one other thing that I did see on this plow. Now I can also also upfit it with deflectors here. I do believe Snow X also makes optional wings that you can attach to the sides to add extra width to the plow if you want to um if i get into a situation the only thing i may do is maybe make, make myself a set of like drift cutters to come out here so that it, i can carry snow when i need to um but then they also give you these holes in the top of this mount so that if i wanted to in the future i could actually add add just a plow light or a light bar that if you look down here in the front i could space it out where it would stick up over the top now i will say the headlights on this machine do stick out over the top of the plow so i may not need to actually put plow lights on here but one thing i am going to do and I, it will be in a future video so watch for that is i am going to add some auxiliary lighting to the front and the rear of the machine that way i can see better at night especially if i am plowing so thanks for watching guys i hope this helps you out if it does make sure you hit that thumbs up button share the video hit that subscribe button and the notification bell along with it and uh share this video with your friends don't be afraid to get out there and get your hands dirty guys you might have a little fun doing it we'll see you on the next one